Today we are in for a smashing time. I'm going to be making smash burgers. The ingredients you need are four burger buns, sesame topped or brioche, whichever you prefer. One tablespoon of sunflower oil, 500 grams of steak mince, 15 to 25 percent fat is good. Four slices of mild cheddar or cheese of your choice. One red onion, finely sliced. Handfuls of iceberg lettuce, finely shredded. Two tomatoes, sliced. Mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard or your preferred sauces. To serve, I've started by breaking off enough of the meat for one burger. And what we want to do is add salt to it. Now, some people say that you shouldn't add salt to meat, but for this type of burger, and I've read other people say this as well, it's actually quite good. I don't know why. Does it add taste to it? Does it help the cooking? I don't know. But just as you would under normal circumstances, you just form a patty like that. And I guess you can make it as thin or as thick as you like. The thinner it is, the quicker it will cook. And this is supposed to be a rather quick recipe. Now I'm going to wash my hands. We'll put the heat on now. And it should be quite a high heat. So we've got our pan, we've got our olive oil, and we want roughly about a quarter of a tablespoon of oil to go on here. That much, I suppose. And we'll let that heat up. And of course, there will be some oil will come out of the meat. And this is a 20% fat mince. So it's the best that you can get. And it's from Waitrose. I've always been fascinated by smash burgers because I've seen them been made on the TV. And it's something that I wanted to do. And then I saw a recipe for it somewhere quite recently. I thought, right, I'm going to do that. Okay, so hopefully... The pan has heated up a relatively good amount now, so we just set our burger on. Oh, and you can hear that sizzle. Don't move it. I'm not going to move it. I'm not going to move it. But this is the last time I'm actually going to touch the meat, so I'm going to wash my hands again. This is where the smash comes on. We've only just put it onto the pan. You can see that it's sizzling. And now what we want to do is to put a piece of parchment over the top of the bun, just like this. And then we get another frying pan and we press it right down like this. Now you can wear oven gloves if you think this is yeah. going to really be too hot. hot. Oh, yeah. Can you smell that, Paul? It smells like... It smells like burger. <laughs> well, it is burger. Now, this will flatten it out quite a bit, and I'm quite interested to see what it's going to look like. I'm quite excited. Uh, I'm also slightly scared because I see some flames, and I thought the parchment was going to catch mm -hmm. fire. Do you think we should flip it? Then? So, I think it's time to flip. So, what we do, we take the first pan off. Should we use that? Well, and then we lift the parchment off and put it to one side. Then we flip the burger like this. Whoa, look at that! And then you put this. No, 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 no. No, no, we're finished with the parchment, Paul. Oh, really? No, 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 no. Get rid of it quick. We have to act quickly here. You're in the way. Right. Now we get our slice of cheese. It goes on like this, and we get a spatula, and we press down. Ooh, look at that. Can you that other one? You might break it. Yeah, well, he's worried I'm going to break it. Okay, you, you are going to break it. Oh, look, this one's got ready made holes for the cheese. Oh, wow. Now, if you were making all four of these at one time, you would set the burger 
a side on a grill pan um, to let it just sort of rest and stay slightly warm. But we're making one at a time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this onto this pan once it comes off and then I'm going to toast my bun and eat it. So I think we're done. Yeah. We've had to open the window because it's a bit smoky in here. Look, my bun is going to pop like that. Oh, look at this. Lovely. Now, here is the burger over here. So we're going to set that on and then it's up to you how you build it. So I like my onion. So I'm going to put some onion on there like this. I suppose I should have a little bit of lettuce and a little bit of tomato like that. What about that? And I've got some mayo here. And I've got some ketchup. And as it's a smash burger, I guess there's only one thing to do, and that is to get the top bit and go like this. Oh, look at that. Now, up to me, Paul, up to me. Or you can be holding it up. If you were a normal person, you would just hold the burger up and eat it. I can't eat burgers like that. I'm scared that my teeth will drop out. So I use a knife and fork. And of course you don't, as you know, I don't know how to use one, but look, look at this. That looks fabulous. Oh my goodness. I'm salivating at the thought of this. Okay, let's try it. Mmm, oh my God. Mm. This is the best burger I've ever made. Oh my yeah. gosh. Mm. Oh my God. Why is it so good? Because mm. you um, pressed on it? I think, yeah, I don't know what it is. It must be the, the way it's been cooked. You can see how juicy it is around the edges. It must be like a mixture of all the other ingredients as well. Mm. I could eat all four that we're going to make. <laughs> we're like two of each. Oh, hi. I think you've seen enough of me eating. But that's how you make smash burgers. You're smashing. Hey, I like popping out. Just like you would get when you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Paul and Marcus. Thank you. Welcome to Paul's Whiskey Connoisseur Club, when I occasionally review whiskeys that you may have tried or you might not even have thought about. Today's whiskey is Lafroig. If you ask me how to spell it, I might spell it wrong, but maybe I should give it a go. It's L A P H R. O I A G. I think I. I think I must. A I G. A. Really? Okay, A I G. The fried. Okay, so this isn't your typical whiskey. This whiskey has character. It's very bold, it's very musky, and it's very fiery. Now let's take a sip. So this does give you a burning feeling. It tastes like burning wood. This might not be a whiskey that you might like, but I think that you know that it's there and you do feel the aftershocks. Um, it may not be for everyone. Normally, whiskeys aren't as bold and they don't leave a lasting effect. But I think this one 
lets you know that it means business and I think for the most part it's good I think I like the burning feeling of it um I know that others might not and especially for those that are trying whiskeys for the first time now let's have another taste this is really good for when you're not feeling well because it does serve as medication or um medicinal purposes i think it's a personal preference but i think that the whiskeys from the islands on the isle which is an island in scotland these are particularly peaty and it, there is a note of um burnt wood i don't really know how to convey it otherwise but i would say don't sniff at it and don't um disregard it. i would say give it a shot you might like it and it's an acquired taste and typically these whiskeys are more pricier than the regular whiskeys that are in the lowlands or the midlands in essence i think that they're more pricier because they're more expensive to produce and i think that there is more of a demand for them so i will say to you cheers everyone and to your health